and welcome to this learning session here we are going to go through the docker rootless we are going to understand uh, what is rootless how what are the advantages and how we can basically uh, use the rootless and we are also going to go through the architecture of understanding how docker can work uh, in the rootless mode all right so let's quickly dive in and let's try and understand uh, uh, regarding how from where the concept of the rootless came and how it can play an essential role in managing the security the way the docker is installed and run right now okay so if you look at the docker engine uh, currently the docker architecture is has been created in such a way that it is tightly integrated with the linux kernel that is it uses the multiple functionality of the linux kernel like c groups and namespace and basically this functionality of linux kernel allows the docker to provide the feature uh, which it which allows to run the docker container in isolation all right so next is what is about the container isolation so basically how this con container isolation works now if you look at the container isolation the major part of uh, in the container isolation is handled with the help of linux namespaces that is it basically creates uh, reserves a part in your hard disk through which all the uh, container is only having the access to it that's how it isolates the container from one another okay so uh, this is regarding the Linux namespace. Now, if you look at the containers uh, for the isolation, it depends upon this Linux namespaces. And the Linux namespaces, if you have to create a Linux namespace, because this is being used by a Docker. So when you install Docker, the Linux namespaces gets create, created. Uh, so you need a privilege capabilities. That is, you need the privilege access in order to create Linux namespaces, then only you can uh, use the container isolation which Docker provides. And that is like the prime feature of using the Docker. So Linux namespaces, uh, to create it, you need privilege capabilities of root user. So again, it's dependent upon the root user. So you, whenever you install Docker, you will compulsorily have to start uh, the process with the root user. and also uh, most of the containers you will find that it runs through the root user uh, all right so let's take a look how this works so basically if you look at docker daemon that docker daemon binds to the unix socket this is this we have already covered in the previous session please uh, if you have not gone through them please go through there we have explained about the unix socket and how docker utilizes them now because the docker is utilizing the unix socket instead of using the tcp port unlike the other applications do so basically this unix socket is owned by root user so if a process like the it has to be run it has to run the unix socket then the root user is required because it owns the unix socket which the docker uses now if you want to provide a user access to the unix socket in order to run the docker commands so you have basically two options that is the user apart from the privileged user i'm talking about that is the root user so if you want to run the docker from any other user in that case in order to provide that user access to the docker commands you require sudo permission for that user now this is one of the way of providing the access to a user to run the docker containers on a machine okay now since you are providing the sudo privilege to the user so it, it also gets an access to the unix socket and it is basically able to run the docker daemon and the basically able to run the commands on it okay or uh, docker commands now there is a another approach 
which we normally follow we do not follow this approach because in if we start following this we will have to make every user the admin user in order to give them a pseudo privilege okay which is not a desirable way to run the docker container so what is the other way the other way is like you can add the user inside the docker group okay now once you add a user inside a docker group that user that docker group is already going to have the ownership of the group is assigned to docker group okay and now because that unique socket is owned by docker group okay when the docker starts it creates a unique socket docker creates a unique socket and that is owned by docker group and because the user is a part of this docker group so he will also gain the access over the group and because he is a part of that group he also gets the access over the socket and that's how it is able to run the docker command but the here we see that in both the above cases basically the root user is playing the centralized role right that is you need to have the privilege access in order to run the docker or at least start the docker process this is where the things gets complicated because root user is having more privilege than what is desired and if you are running like this then there are certain uh, bugs which might exist in your system okay and because you are having the containers are having the extra permissions uh, because they are run as a root user so these can be exploited and which opens a security related issues as well however uh, if you are running them in isolation if you are uh, taking the other security uh, measures then it greatly reduces it but then also uh, because inherently it's being run by the root user that allows it to you know uh, uh, get it allows it to expose to the security threats now how do you, how can you minimize this how can you uh, run because inherently the docker has been created in such a way to be run with the help of the privileged user uh, because it requires the access to namespace this is where the rootless came into the picture okay now if you look at the rootless this is the very new feature which has been introduced and uh, this is little uh, uh, you will have to understand uh, uh, put the extra effort to understand how this rootless works basically it takes the advantage of the username okay now uh, uh, this uh, basically the namespaces okay it takes the advantage of the namespaces now namespaces we already know is required for the container isolation okay so basically what it does is that uh, it basically runs the container as well as the docker daemon inside the same namespace and that is how it is able to run the user without the root permission that is you don't require the root to install the docker or to uh, add the user inside uh, the uh, you know basically provided the pseudo permission or uh, uh, you know uh, those kind of things are not required basically it can be installed by a non uh, privileged user and he can also use the uh, uh, docker container without needing the root privilege okay so how this works basically a uh, uh, username uh, if you uh, look at the users okay uh, uh, so in the current uh, phase what happens is that it uh, the you uh, the docker daemon uses the root privilege in order to gain the access on the socket that we know now uh, in order to make this uh, rootless work what uh, uh, they have done is that the user there is a inside the user namespace there was already a feature inside the docker which has been provided over the long period of time now which is user namespace remap flag okay and uh, basically this ex already exists in the docker it allows the users to map the uh, it allows you to map the users inside the container to a different range of host providing the better security in case where the container 
has access to the same external resources okay now if you look here basically what happens is that initially if you look at this first box this is where the this is the case where there is no user namespace okay so let's add this okay this will help uh, make you understand much better way if you are using no user namespace in this case okay uh, so this explains the no user name namespace and uh, suppose if uh, you are second is where you are actually with user namespace I will be explaining you this it will become more clear second one is with user namespace and the third one is basically the rootless which we are covering in this topic okay third one is your rootless okay now let's go through this it will become uh, more clear to you okay so initially if you look here basically the docker daemon okay it starts with a uid of zero okay and uh, 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 basically uh, this uid zero uh, is belongs to the root user inside the linux operating system and your container also gets the uid 0 and container b acquires some other uid there are basically a number of uids which are present inside the namespace okay so your docker daemon is running with a uid of 0 and uh, container b is running with a uh, it acquires some other uh, uid like in our case let's say it's uh, assuming the uid of 1000 okay now uh, basically what happens uh, with the user namespace is that uh, again the docker daemon uh, uh, this user namespace is basically created this is like a requirement for configuring the rootless so if you are going to create the rootless uh, you will have to create the user namespace first and basically you are going to use the docker remap now what uh, i already explained about the docker remap it allows you to uh, uh, it uh, it allows you to map the users inside the container with a range of host okay so uh, basically you are going to use this remap and uh, what happens in this case is that when you create uh, the uh, docker uh, you automatically map the container which you are going to create inside the uh, uid which you have already created for this purpose now remember that uh, linux allows the user to create the namespaces uh, without extending the privileges these uh, so these namespaces only map a single user therefore if you will have if you want to run like the many existing uh, uh, containers uh, so basically you will have to overcome this uh, uh, limitation of the rootless and this can be done with the help of the uid map package which allows you to ma remap the users uh, okay so basically you can use this binary of the uid map okay and uh, which allows you to use the rootless and uh, basically you are going to map the container with a uh, existing uh, uh, like the uid to which you have already mapped like in our case if you look at this diagram it has mapped the thousand this thousand uid okay it has remapped with the sub uid of ten thousand so what happens is this container a gets created over the ten thousand uid okay and this uid has been remapped basically uh, to work with the 10000 okay so it's a it's basically a, like a sub uid and similarly container b goes to the 11000 now basically what happens in case of rootless is that you already created a separate namespace and what happens in this case is that docker daemon and the container a both are created inside the same uid that is 1000 okay and which has a sub uid of uh, 10000 uh, uh, like in this case we have kept it 10001 uh, 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 just to denote the difference okay so basically the docker what you have to remember here is that in case of rootless 
basically the docker daemon and the container which you create those are created inside the same namespace and every time you create a further container that will assume a sub uid and since all of them exist inside the same namespace you do not require uh, the uh, additional uh, privilege since you are not creating any new namespace rather you are using the existing namespace and basically using the sub uids to assign it to the containers and all, also the docker daemon is also a part of the same namespace so basically it allows the rootless to work without the root privilege which comes with a large number of advantage from a security perspective uh, uh, this will uh, uh, help you out to overcome uh, the operating system uh, bugs and the uh, exploitation from a security perspective but then again there are some cave heats uh, for the rootless as well that is if you look uh, at the current uh, version of rootless it basically the overlay network is supported only in case of ubuntu okay if you look at the other operating systems the rootless basically uses the vfs storage uh, driver and this storage di driver is basically suboptimal okay so it is not recommended for the production uh, workloads okay so uh, you can say that uh, uh, apart from ubuntu uh, if you are using some other operating system then you might not get the optimal uh, workload and the performance okay and uh, uh, now here you need to understand that uh, don't think like rootless is a complete replacement of the existing docker engine okay no uh, that is not how it uh, really uh, matters okay how does it really work so basically uh, 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 if you are working in the rootless mode then you are not going to get the c groups you are not going to get the resource controls you will not be able to work with the app armor security profiles there will be issues with the checkpoint restore overlay networks okay so uh, these are like all the limitations and uh, you will have to expose the ports from containers uh, using the manual squat helper process okay that is the other thing so again these are basically all the limitations currently now if you want to overcome them uh, there are uh, workarounds which you can use like although it it's not using the uh, overlay network uh, you can still use the mobi slash vpn kit project which is basically helpful which is again being used by the docker desktop uh, okay so you can also use that alternatively you can uh, install the slurp for net ns that is then another option okay and uh, uh, so this is this is mostly all about the rootless now since we have gone through it in the next video because this has gone little lengthier uh, in the explanation part in the next video we are going to cover about the how to get the rootless docker installed on your system okay uh, so i will be covering that in my next video please subscribe to our channel if you have not subscribed yet by clicking on the bell icon okay and stay tuned i will be uploading the next video in this series in a short period of time thanks everyone see you in next video